Hi everyone and good afternoon. I am Nathan Season, the coordinator of the FEU Career and Placement Office. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Welcome to our pre-employment preparation talk webinar series, also known as PEP Talk. PEP Talk is a regular virtual series designed to prepare the graduating students for employment by equipping them with the necessary knowledge and skills through various talks touching on various topics delivered by industry professionals and experts. Today's webinar is being live streamed via Microsoft Teams. It will also be recorded and uploaded at the Far Eastern University Facebook page later, as well as at the Career and Placement official Facebook page and Weebly. And I do believe we are live right now as well. Please submit your comments and questions anytime at our conversation page, which can be found at the right side of your screen if you're using a desktop. And also at the live Q&A tab if you're using a mobile phone or other portable device. So you can post any questions at any time and later it will be entertained during the question and answer part. So for our today's topic, it is all about Career Preparation 101 and successfully finding a career in the digital landscape. These two are very important because as you all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has placed us in a very challenging situation in terms of how to go about our careers and also how to undergo in our first job hunt. That is why please stick with us because I'm sure you will learn a lot. And by the way, I just would like to remind everyone to please make sure that your microphones are on mute, especially during the lecture proper to avoid causing any unnecessary noise. Thank you for your cooperation and enjoy the program. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, may I call on the Director of the Career and Placement Office to give her opening remarks. Please let us all welcome Ms. Maria Carmencita Vesuva Alfonso. Ma'am, the screen is yours. Ayan. Thank you very much, Lintan, our distinguished speaker, Vice President Joven Castro, Deans, faculty members, students and co-employees, good afternoon. And thank you for taking the time out of your busy day, uh, busy schedule to join us today. The recent academic year showed us a preview of how things will be even after the pandemic, where many might be able to cope with easily, some may endure hardships. As we shift to a new paradigm, adapting to the so-called new normal will largely depend on how prepared we are especially our graduates. With this, the FEU Career and Placement Office, or CAPO, has designed a 13-part series webinar to give the students the basics of working and finding a job amidst the new normal. We have also prepared and migrated online all other CAPO activities designed to help prepare our graduating students for the new world of work. Online mock interview and coaching, online exclusive recruitment, student exposure to industries, to name a few. We shall be posting all this in the FEU, official FEU social media sites and Canvas, so please check out our event posters and calendars. For this second episode titled Career Preparation 101, Successfully Finding a Career in the Digital Landscape, we are grateful to be joined by a representative from Caliber, an IT company providing hiring solutions in Southeast Asia. Uh, that revolutionized the way candidates find a career and companies hire talent. Since Calibre's mission is to connect companies with their next generation leaders, our speakers' valuable insights will be very helpful in preparing our dear students for their careers. Capo believes that this topic should be discussed to prepare the students and give them a better perspective of the world they are facing, one that is no longer the same as it was a few months back. And while it is not going to be easy to sort out the challenges in this new paradigm that we are in, always remember the mantra, be brave, because Tamarows have always been resilient to whatever comes our way. And now, without further ado, allow me to introduce our speaker. He is the Program Coordinator for Strategic Partnerships of Caliber, a company that matches talent jobs using artificial intelligence and is Southeast Asia's first Y Combinator company. A graduate of Business Administration at De La Salle College of St. Benil, he is the suki of the FEO community as 
he would frequent our campus as a speaker in the different institutes, covering a wide array of topics from career preparation to employment, or to employment opportunities, that is. He joined Caliber in 2017 and was able to establish partnerships with education, business, and government in institutions nationwide. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to your screens, Mr. Dean Gulaon. Mr. Dean. Hi, Hi. Sir Dean. So sorry. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so... Again, thank you all so much for um, attending this event. Now, I know that um, you probably uh, busy kayo or probably you're uh, attending to chores, but instead you chose to be here. So thank you all so much because without you guys, um, this event wouldn't even be possible. Second, thank you also to um, FU uh, Career Placement Office for organizing this. And uh, yeah, let's jump straight to um, the talk. Yeah, so I am sharing my screen. So there. So I come from Caliber. So for those of you that have not heard of the company yet, um, we are a Filipino-owned company. Uh, we started back in uh, 2012. And uh, our vision is actually to, to connect um, people to opportunities. And uh, so... To reiterate, um, I am a graduate of Benild. I am serving as the Senior Strategic Partnerships Associate at Caliber. And outside of work, um, I'm an athlete and I love playing video games. So, who we are as a company, our company is the one that bridges talent and opportunity. And we craft programs to continuously enable people to realize a greater version of themselves. So overall, we help the Filipino community get connected to opportunities and upskill them. Our company has been working with um, companies na uh, nationwide and internationally um, for the past years. And yeah, uh, my talk is going to be successfully finding a career in the digital landscape. Now, um, as we know, the current situation has... Um, greatly affected the landscape in the Philippines, right? But even before this pandemic, uh, we already we already have been experiencing changes um, in the current talent mar marketplace. And um, to show you and to give context to this talk, I'm going to show you a statement from the World Economic Forum. Now, for those of you that have not heard of the World Economic Forum, it's an organization committed to improving the state of the world by engaging business, political, academic, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. So, in a nutshell, um, it's a big org that focuses on the big problems um, per country, right? And one of the topics that arose last year is that um, of employment or rather the disruption of technology into ushering the age of the fourth industrial revolution. So during one of their meetings, um, they have said that in ASEAN alone, 11,000 people will enter the workforce every day, every day, take note, for the next 15 years. How will the region's workforce find its job? So ito yung, um, this was the question that was presented by the World Economic Forum. And actually, um, this statement um, was actually made before COVID, right? And in connection to that, actually, um, based from our data and research, um, these numbers have since tripled. And to show you, okay, and um, so what I'm showing you right now is data from the World Economic Forum. So they said that Around 94,000 employers, including 16,000 enterprises, will need to recruit millions of skilled millennials in the next uh, five years. And why is that? Uh, well, of course, there is a rapid improvement in technology such as AI and machine learning, right? And because of this, some jobs may be at risk. 
but don't be scared um with more with the de- development of technology comes with more opportunities and thus these progressive companies are looking for talent in demand talent and uh up to date talent and so what i'm going to show you um here are the rules that has been developed or actually would be redundant as we slowly um, usher, uh, as we slowly experience the fourth um, industrial revolution. So as you can see, there are stable roles, new roles, and redundant roles. Again, uh, we, we've taken this from the survey of the World Economic Forum. And uh, you may notice some of the skills um, is going to be displaced. And because of that, because of displacement, of course, skills that are required by the industry are going to be changing, right? So by 2015, as you can see in comparison, uh, you can see that these are the only skills that um, is currently in demand at the time. But in 2020, you may notice that some skills have evolved or have uh, transferred to 2020, right? And what my point here is that in order for you to become um, a potential candidate for the companies of today is that you need to develop or learn new skills or essential skills, which can be transferred to multiple industries. Okay, so I, what I'm showing you is um, different roles that have sprung from the um, development of technology. So back then, there were there wasn't such a thing as uh, data scientists, digital marketer, digital strategist, right? So for you, um, so mga students jan dati, mga high school, di ba? Dati hindi pa boom yung Facebook, wala pa masyadong Facebook ads. Dati wala pa tayong grab, only taxi, right? So firsthand na experience natin yung development of, ng technology. And because of this, maraming nagkaroon ng bagong opportunities and mar- maraming nagkaroon ng bagong requirements. Okay, and the next slide, what I'm trying to show you is companies that are trying to disrupt the digital landscape. So some of you may have heard yan, Canva, sa mga nagpa-present dyan sa school, Shopee, I'm sure you've heard of it, Grab even. So these uh, are the companies that is reshaping the industry that we know today. Everything, uh, if hindi nyo napapansin, um, everything is now accessible via our mobile, via web. Right? So if we need an information or probably we need something that uh, that needs to be purchased, we go online. And uh, to prove uh, my uh, to prove my history rather or my my, uh, my story earlier, I'm going to show you the data that is behind yung emerging trends and jobs in the Philippines. Okay? So what I'm what I'm please bear with the data, but this shows that um, there is a continuous growth, rather month of month, year on year growth on roles that weren't there before. So you may not notice here in 2017, halos 200 lang yung uh, job Java developers. But as we progress through the year, dumadami yung demand. And uh, by this, since dumadami yung demand ng mga bagong roles natin, of course, these jobs would have to require a different skill sets. But also, you may notice that these jobs have a similar skill requirements, right? Which allow you to prepare and actually be aware of the skills that you need to have. Okay, so by being aware, um, you are setting up yourself to be more marketable in the talent marketplace today. Okay, so moving on, um, I'm just showing another um, uh, new role here. So that in 2017, almost zero, but now uh, in 2020, it's growing. The roles are exponentially growing. Okay, and you may notice here as well that um, these other uh, programming roles are emerging. So you may notice na, hey, wait, puro technical roles. Puro um, programming jobs, right? But my point here is whether you're a developer or you're a marketer, it all boils down into one thing. 
it's the essential or transferable skills that you have. So take note, um, even though magkakaiba tong roles na to, uh, they would have the similar skill requirement. Okay? Nag-iba lang siya ng specialization. Right? And the point that I'm trying to drive here is meron tayong increase in technical roles and skill-focused technology jobs that uh, didn't exist from before. And because of technology, it's reshaping the way the Philippine employment is going to be or even the world. Especially now in times of the pandemic, um, not only that there is a spike for or demand for these technical roles or new roles, but there's also a demand for work from home opportunities. Right? And so now na alam na natin yun, uh, I'm going to show you also here a data that we have regarding the newest job functions, newest job functions here in the Philippines are actually top. So you may notice here that sales marketing is number one. That is no surprise because a lot of skills that are needed for these functions are transferable skills or essential skills. But you may notice on the second uh, row, meron tayong um, other. Which means that these are roles that have not yet been defined. It is mga roles natin na that are emerging from the develop from the development of technology. Yeah. And um, now, now that we have a grasp on what uh, what's happening in the industry or the market, we need to understand the skills in the labor market, like or rather. How are we being affected? And bakit tayo na affect And so I want to drive. Uh, I want to show you two illustrations. One being the elephant and the hummingbird. The elephant represents educational institutions, the schools, universities, training centers, vocational centers. And bakit siya elephant? Elephants represent stability, right? Elephants also stability. Uh, also represent uh, a slow and steady uh, progress, right? So elephants, or rather our schools, represent the basics, the fundamentals, right? The theory or yung mga first, ha first experiences natin with technology, right? Or rather with, um, rather ito yung skills building natin, right? As we are, um, graduating. But then there's also the presence of the hummingbird. A hummingbird is um, a fleeting animal. Lagi siyang on the go. Lagi siya lumilipad. And this represents our technology because year on year technology changes, skills, skill requirements are changing, and trends are changing. Imagine a few years ago, wala pa tayong taxi. Tapos biglang the next day, nagkaroon na ng Grab, nagkaroon na Uber, right? or even sa mga programmer dyan, engineers, yung mga tools na ginagamit natin this year, nagiba na siya um, the next year. Right? So, ganun kabilis yung movement ng industry. And because of that, the elephant isn't able to keep up. Nagkakaroon tayo ng skills gap. And because of this skills gap, nagkakaroon tayo ng difficulty in employment. It's because of the structural flaw na students are affected, mga graduates are affected. That's why kapag nag apply tayo, diba, minsan yung mga job requirements, diba, it requires you to have experience even though na hindi ka pag-graduate. So, dun tayo nagkakaroon ng problems. But, I'm telling you that there is a way that dahil, but that because of the development of technology, it, open ups, it, open, it opened up opportunities for us to grow. Right. So again, um, what I'm showing here, the blue side is yung um, elephant natin institutions. So by graduating, right, you automatically get to have traditional credentials, degree, licenses, certificates, na mga special specialized tools niyo, right. And then the other, um, the other, um, the orange uh, bracket uh, represents yung opportunities that are in in the tech space for us to learn, right? So going back to my other slide, my point that I like to drive here is that credentials is what drives yung 
employment today. Why? Because if you have the credentials, it means that you are hireable, you are in demand, and also you're up to date. And by utilizing yung growth ng technology, di ba? Again, accessible tayo. Nagkaroon na tayo ng um, platform for us to acquire these skills. So, if we combine all of these together, we become marketable, right? Because credentials again are made available through tech space. Baka hindi nyo um, narinig but meron tayong Coursera dyan. Y even YouTube, di ba? Meron tayong mga videos to learn. Right? So by combining all of these factors, meron tayong degree, licenses, certificates, meron tayong skill badges, meron tayong um, certifications, is mga online courses natin, uh, we enable ourselves to be more flexible, stackable, portable, and demand driven. What I mean by this is that in any industry, you can adapt. Right? Ang kailangan mo lang baguhin is yung specialization mo. But bottom line, what you have is yung mga essential skills. Right? Well, if you have your core, you can move to different industries. Ang kailangan nyo lang is willingness to learn. Okay? And so, by understanding it, right, we are able to bridge the skills gap. Again, we have traditional credentials. We also have flexible education and uh, online courses. Yeah, meron tayong SQA Labs. Coursera, yan, mga, skill, mga Skillshare, um, those platforms, right? And if we have those, we're able to keep up with the hummingbird. We're able to keep up with the industry, right? So if we all have those, mas magiging marketable tayo. Okay, now, now na alam na natin yung uh, state ng no, no talent marketplace and, and aware na tayo with what's happening with um, the, the labor gap. We have to understand um, how the digital age also affects our career search. Um, discounting the um, also taking into consideration yung um, elephant and hummingbird principle natin, right? So because of um, the rise of technology, employers are able to have very accessible information on you. Okay, the point that I want to make here is that if you have a social platform that you're using, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, these are these can be accessed by your recruiters, right? And by having those platforms, dapat ayusin yung profiles nyo, okay, students? So whenever you have a profile online, right, it automatically says about who you are, what you believe in, and your personality niyo. Right? And these can be accessed by employers. Right? So even Dean Bulaon, if you search my name and dami na come up, I'm sure your names would come up as well. So employers use the tech space to scout for talent and to look for inconsistencies. But also by doing this, they're able to streamline their recruitment process. Mas madali sa kanila. Hindi, hindi na sila gumagamit ng papers. More or less, mga companies right now are relying on the digital space. Okay? And also, good news, of course, sa ating mga job seekers, this is also, um, we also have an accessible um, space for us to use to research, uh, to research for companies or recruiters, right? Even yung mga, if may mga gusto tayong company, right, we just research then we, we research there na, for example, ano yung values ng companies, mission, vision, um, ano yung mga founders niya uh, ng company and actually online then I think if you guys have been watching YouTube, Facebook, may nakita na kanya mga TED Talks, diba? So as job seekers, it we have pretty much an unlimited um, accessibility um, to these opportunities. Ang kailangan lang natin is to have a great profile, maayos na profile, and to identify ano yung mga skills na kailangan natin. Research, okay? We need to discover any mga skills na nagukulang tayo, and we need to discover platforms for us to address those. Then moving on, now in, in connection to um, our advantage as job seekers, we also have the advantage of educational and credential providers. So, as I mentioned earlier, meron tayong spaces for to, for us to learn. Not necessarily na kailangan tayong magbayad, but meron naman mga spaces dyan na libre, right? So, with that, we're able to see if any yung needs na industry. We can easily search up top uh, 
top 10 skills that are needed for 2020. We identify that, we search through those skills, and then we find platforms or learning platforms to address those, right? So if we are aware of these things, we're able to prepare more, we are able to prepare better for your upcoming interview. And now, which drives me to my last point. Now, taking into account all of the, these things that we've learned, um, this is how we navigate in the career, uh, in, in the digital age, rather. Right? So, it all, starts, uh, it all starts with the job search or job discovery. Like, knowing ano ba mga jobs that are out there for me, ano ba mga in-demand jobs. And ano ba yung skills na kailangan, na kailangan um, for those roles? Ano ba yung credentials that I need? And also, ano ba yung platforms, again, I can't stress this enough, enough, ano ba yung mga platforms that we can use to advance our skills? Now, as a candidate, if we take all of these things into account, this is actually a cycle, you may realize. So by searching for a job, right, inahanap mo, ano, mga, ano, mga, ano ba yung mga jobs that are fit for me, for my personality, right? Ano ba yung validation that I need? For me to get into this job, and ano lang yung and ano yung um, platforms like that, that I can use. So you may notice that it all starts with discovering, right? Knowing what your weaknesses are, ano yung kailangan, and ano yung mga platforms. There, so there is a continuous cycle, continuous learning cycle, rediscovering, and continuous relearning cycle that we all need to have. Even me as a professional, uh, I'd have to stay up to date. Because of course, I'm always looking for opportunities. I'm always looking for um, skills that I need to be able to improve myself. And ito na yung so making cycle natin um, after we graduate. Okay. And my key points, my last key points for this talk is that credentials are a, are a powerful way to market yourself and prove your skills in the market that you are employable okay the number two by acquiring credentials and investing in education you know investing time in learning and development yourself is an effective way to market or communicate yourself to potential employers because sabihin natin you learned a new skills and certificates from this certain course you display it in your profile. You display it in your LinkedIn. Now, when that recruiter searches for people that have these types of skills, your name may come, your name may come up there. So it's important for you to always develop your skills. Think of it as a brand for yourself. Isipin yun na para kayong design, para kayong cereal box na may design. Na yung design ninyo is what makes you attractive or marketable. Now, as you learn things, as you learn to design, right, you get to make your profile attractive. You get to make your serial box more attractive. And then by doing so, kumbaga, recruiters will just uh, will just come to you. Okay, passive na lang siya. Okay? And lastly, my last key point would be joining ca platforms like Caliber, uh, LinkedIn, um, Coursera, now it creates a it creates a space for you to market yourself, to market your skills, capabilities, and to even get in touch with industry experts. Now the advantage of be belonging to these platforms that you get to connect with industry professionals um, in the industry. Like for example, you can connect with your probably your boss in the internship, or probably you can connect with me. Diba? So you can you can um, get in touch with someone if merong ano ba yung mga nangyayari sa a talent marketplace ano ba yung ano ba yung projections ng data ano ba yung kailangan na skills right so by doing all of these things you're able to successfully navigate and discover careers in the digital landscape and so I think that ends my talk um, so if you have any questions feel free to send it over so I can uh, address them, okay? Thank you all so much. All right, thank you very much, Dean, for that very informative talk. I'm sure 
uh, our students will be asking a lot of questions about that. I myself too. <laughs> so without further ado, let's move uh, forward towards our Q&A part. So to our students again, so I'm seeing a couple of questions. If you guys have any questions to add, please, now is the time to post it at our Q&A tab. Uh, without uh, further ado, let's start. Dean, are you ready for the questions? <laughs> it's quite interesting question here. Uh, so the first question, Dean, is from Ron and yeah. Rina. Okay. okay. So is career in the digital landscape solely for the people who has already earned a degree? If oh, so, okay. how can a student be successful in finding a career? <laughs> okay. Okay. So again, uh, going back to my points earlier, meron tayong two things, right? Yung elephant and yung hummingbird. Now, ang advantage, uh, the advantage of this or the beauty of this is that even though na wala kang degree, you're able to learn and develop your skills. You know, companies are even hiring for um, student, uh, hiring for professionals na kahit di pa nagtatapos ng college, but they're willing to learn. I've, I've seen many professionals that have been successful um, by upscaling themselves online. So what you really need to do is just to develop your skill and to develop, be aware of yung mga skills that you're lacking. So again, to answer your question, if yung is career in the digital landscape solely for the people who are, who are already earned a degree, so not necessarily, you can earn and an internship, you can earn a full-time employment just by developing your skills. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question, Sir Don. Um, so, for Sheila, uh, what are the specific competencies for a fresh grad in the normal in order to be hired easily? Many thanks. Okay. So, going back um, to my earlier points again, uh, kailangan natin dito is essential skill. Okay. Mm, I would say number one would be communication skill. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sobrang common ng answer ko, right? But if you think about it, communication is a very complex skill. Kasi if you're not able to communicate your skills and capabilities properly, you can't land the job. So you should start with uh, developing your, your communication skill. Okay? So it's like storytelling, di ba? Like for example, nagkakwento kayo with your friends like, Oh, uh, narinig ba tong series na to or narinig to or, or natikman mo na ba tong food na to? Notice how you are kumbaga selling or parang oh okay to pagkain na to i-try mo to. Parang ganoon na rin yun sa sarili niya. Eh. If you know what you what to communicate about yourself, like for example, oh hey, I'm Dean, good at speaking, public speaking, um, I'm good at project management, diba? By practicing communication, can able you can market yourself properly and become more hireable. So yeah, and in addition to that, um, even yung other specific competencies, um, so industry secret, and I think medyo maging controversial ako dito, um, but, <laughs> but companies are actually looking for people who are willing to learn rather than sa mga specialized ones, right? Mm. So even though you, have, you are competing with someone who is experienced, who has specialization, but they're not willing to learn a new thing Right? Mayro kang edge. Mm. Kasi again, what's up to date is yung hummingbird. If mm. you're up to date with the current trends, you're up to date with the skills that you need to learn. Like for example, up to date ngayon, data science. Now, learn data science, you're employable. Okay? Digital marketing, sobrang boom siya ngayon, right? Uh, Facebook ads, diba? Google ads, and dami. Mm. If may skill ka dun, diba? Uh, mer you're employable. So, with the specific competencies, I think it would fluctuate depending on the industry that you're looking for. The competencies would would uh, differ from IT, finance, and so on. But it all boils down to your learning at attitude. Yun lang talaga. In fact, when uh, one of my one of our statements, uh, well, one of our HR manager statements is that um, even though next um, na one of our HR managers' um, statements is that. She is looking for people mm -hmm. who has um, no skill but is willing to put in the time and effort to learn. So, yun talaga. Kasi if willing ka, di ba, up to date ka. Yun talaga. 
Oh, that's some uh, good insights from you, Dean. And with that being said, no, as long as we are willing to learn, a question from Lazaro asks, how does one ba narrow down the overwhelming job results in the internet? Because right. we all know na, okay, as long as we are willing to learn. So, paano? Okay. Yeah. So, um, to actually relate to you, Sir Robert Lazaro. So, dati kasi, kwento ko lang, that when I was a fresh grad, hindi ko alam if ano take ko. Um, but for you to able to be able to identify if ano ba yung career for you, you need to know more about yourself. You need to do introspecting. Ano ba yung skill na gusto mo? Ano ba yung job na gusto mo? Ano ba yung sa kamasaya? But again, ayo kasi I, I don't want to impose na okay, eto dapat yung career mo. Kasi the reality of it is that you are defined by your choices. If ano yung if ano yung mga ano yung mga things na meron ka, ano yung mga develop mo, probably yun yung mga roles for you. Okay? So meaning that meaning you have to do some introspecting. Uh, again. So parang ano ba yung would I would I chose um, money or growth? Yun lang yan eh. So kasi yung two options na yun, merong pros and cons. And the major pros and cons of it is that yung learning curve. Okay? So, most high-paying high jobs have a, I would say, rigid rigid learning experience or curve. Parang, if dito ka lang space na to, dito ka lang. If admin work ka lang, admin work ka lang. Ganun siya. But if you're choosing growth, Meron, meron kang option to grow. Parang imagine mo may, play, may playground ka, right? So if you're there, you're able to showcase, you're able to discover ano yung things na magaling ka. Kasi when I, to be honest, when I came to Caliber, um, alam ko na yung gusto ko eh. What I, well, well, alam ko na yung gusto ko, but hindi ko alam if ano yung meron akong skills. What I do know is that I want to help people. And then nung nandun ako sa Caliber, I started to discover na May passion pala ako in, like for this one, public speaking. May passion pala ako in connecting um, employers to um, to to talent, right? Nag, so, I made programs for it. So, hence yung partnerships namin. So, depende lang dun sa choice that you're willing to live with. So, yun na yun. So, um, so with, a, with the overwhelming, all overwhelming job results in the internet, for you to narrow it down, you need to know more about yourself. Uh, so, yeah. so start with yourself first, right? Correct. Yeah. Because okay. if you can't even answer yung question na ano ba talaga yung gusto ko, or saan ako magaling, you won't you won't know how to start. So, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Dean. And another question from Curtis Cruz, Mr. Ooh. Curtis Cruz. Aside from Participating in professional networks such as LinkedIn or Caliber, would it be advisable to create an independent e-portfolio? Now, this question would be asked, diba? Kasi... Yes, yeah. So I would say one one hundred percent yes. So even so, mm-hmm. even yung mga ibang employers are looking right now for personal websites, like may personal blog ka ba that you're that you're sharing? Meron ka bang uh, YouTube channel that is sharing about your passion. So yes, um, it would definitely be a value to you to create such a platform or such a portfolio, because it allows you to market yourselves more, Mike market yourself more. So again, the more avenues for you to market yourself, the better. So yes. All right. And then lastly, Dean, this is uh, from me personally. Uh, you mentioned earlier about other platforms wherein students can actually uh, fill in the gap of their skills. Are companies really acknowledging online certificates? Like, for example, you you train under Coursera with all the other special skills. In acknowledge ba nila? Okay. So, to answer uh, Florina's question, I would say, no, it's a fact. It's yes. Um, so, again, yes, if yung if yung course that you took is relevant to the job that you're applying to. Okay? So for example, may kang project management course. But then, ang ina-applyan mo is it's a completely different thing. It, would, it wouldn't add value. But, yun, as long as you have the right credentials for the right job, okay ka. And even though 
even though that you are computer literate and you want to transition into a different industry, you can go for it. Again, ang kila ang ang bottom line natin dito is that you need to have the, these essential skills. Again, fundamentals lang yung pinoprovide ng school. It doesn't necessarily define who you are. You no, know, I have colleagues na nagtapos sila ng nurse, but right now project manager sila in an IT company. Alayo, di ba? It's because they took the time to learn. So yun lang siya. Um, if you want to learn about to transition into a different industry altogether, you need to learn about the industry and then trends niya. And again, ane mga skills na kailangan for that industry. So yes, you can definitely land a job and probably um, cross across um, go across different industries. So yeah. Wow, thank you very much, Dean. I'm afraid that we're running out of time. Uh, I'm sure our students will have a lot of questions. We're, we're going to premiere again this episode later this day or maybe tomorrow. So please uh, check our Facebook page at the FU okay. Career in Placement. Thank you very much to our speaker, Dean Bulaon. Uh, to give a synthesis for that, so our speaker provided a very clear context of the current situation that despite the current COVID pandemic, there's still employment opportunities available. The overall big picture is that technological advancement leads to the creation of new jobs, which will then require a new set of skills. Mostly, these new jobs are primarily new positions created and mostly require technology-savvy individuals. Now, the challenge for us fresh graduates is to see whether we have those skills or not. Our speaker mentioned in his talk earlier the 10 essential and transferable skills you need to possess in order to be employable in the fourth industrial wave. This means a possible retooling of ourselves may be needed. If you think that you lack the new essential skills for the, for the new jobs, you must not fear because there are numerous available online resources to learn from the man. Also remember to professionalize your online social media profiles as companies may now have an access to it. Even if we kept it private, right? we will never know. So it's best to be safe. Likewise, also do your research on company that you are applying for as this will give you an undeniable edge among the other applicants. So always remember to be ready for the available opportunities and we at the Career and Placement Office will be here to support you FEU graduates. So there you have it. That concludes our pep talk for today. So in behalf of the FEU Career and Placement Office, once again, we would like to thank Mr. Dean Bulaon for his precious time and also to our students, faculty members, and employees for joining us. We do hope that you've learned a lot from this webinar. I also hope that you could join us again next week for another pep talk webinar. So our topic for next week will be about professional appearance and grooming for the workplace and how to prepare and ace the all-important job interview. I believe earlier there was a question. So next week, abangan nyo po yung susunod nating episode. So you may even register immediately after this. So thank you very much, everyone. And as we end, thank you, Dean. And as we end, thank please everyone. join us for our FEU hymn.